Hey guys, Lyrus here, and today I'm making a small tutorial about the selection circle, or just uh, generally circle done in materials quick. Now, imagine you have a, like a strategy game, and you want to have a selection on your unit. There are various things you want to do to, you know, to emphasize the the fact that this unit is selected. Uh, we're not going through the implementation of the selection logic uh, in this tutorial. So this is up to you how you do this. There are many ways, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna just go to some folder here and I'm gonna create new material. And we will make the uh, selection material here. So let's see, um, don't have much space here. Okay, let me just open another one. Let's see here, okay, great. So we go to materials, we take a new material, we say selection circle, okay. so. Why do I want to have my own selection material? Uh, the reason is we want to have it fully procedural, so it will be really, really cheap. Now I'll move it here. So I'll arrange my viewport and stats we don't really need. Okay, so you could do uh, just, you know, you could do well by just going somewhere into the starter content, like mobile starter content I have here, and somewhere here, we have this burst. And we if we go into the red channel, you see this is a circle here. This is one way, of course. And we will have a circle, we put it on the plane or like a cube, and we put it into the onto the mesh. But we want to have a procedural, procedurally generated one, which is cheaper and you know it's it's just, just more cool because you know if you can do procedural stuff without using texture slots, it's it's really nice for in terms of optimization. So let's go ahead and uh, let's see, we need a radial gradient. Okay, here we go. So if we just start previewing this one, we get this thing. Okay, this is fine. So uh, for simplicity, we say that this material is, uh, first of all, we don't need any lightning, so it's unlit. It will be much cheaper after that. And then we want translucent because we really want to have a, a circle and everything else will just be translucent. So if we take this gradient, we put into opacity and then we have emissive color. And let's just create quickly new uh, vector parameter here. Be color. Okay. Uh, I use the American way of writing color. Sorry for that. That's just how I see it. And it has some color here. And we just put it into emissive color because we don't have any base color. This is a uh, unlit material. Okay, if we stop preview node, what you will get is you will get this uh, this nice uh, round shape. But we want to have a circle, so let's copy this node. Control C, Control V, and then let's take this guy and let's subtract from him this guy. But for this guy, we need a smaller radius. So okay, the default radius is. 0.5. 0 0.5 0 0.5 essentially is, is half of the of the texture coordinate so it's like 50 percent of, of the size of this uh, of, of texture uh and then what we do is we take uh let's add a scalar parameter uh we say base base uh, radius we say control c control v to take another parameter and now this will be the same parameter, just an instance of it. So we need to rename the second one. We say subtraction uh, radius, right? Now the base radius we can still leave to 0 0.5. And again, we, we use it here in order to make uh, to be able to make small adjustments afterwards. Now let's do something like 0 0.47 here. Now they will have really, really slight uh, difference in terms of radius. We subtract this guy, start preview node, we get this. Now one thing you could do, of course, uh, is to make sure, and I suggest doing that when you work with the subtraction, especially when we work with, the, with this kind of um, procedural, procedurally generated uh, patterns and subtraction is, is, is in place. So I suggest uh, we do a clamp from 0 to 1 to make sure we don't have any negative values. And this goes to opacity, because for opacity, it doesn't really matter. Anything below zero and bigger than one doesn't make any sense. Okay, so now stop previewing this node. We will get this. Now, uh, it's, it is something, it goes to circle, but what you will notice is that if we save it, and then we go ahead and um, 
let's see, where was it? Okay, it's here. So we create material instance based on it. We just I just name it like this because that's that's how I got used to naming it. Uh, we put it on the plane, and now we start experimenting with our uh, subtraction radius. If we increase it just slightly, like 0 0.49, what we get is we get uh, you know lesser lesser opacity essentially because uh, there is there is this um, smooth transition, smooth. Uh, Smooth round shape. So, so what we really want, we want to have this this uh, rougher edge, but uh, you know, thinner circle, right? Because if if we just increase the you know the um, the brightness essentially of the material, we'll get the same problem. We will still have a really really uh, soft edges, and we need this to be thinner, but the edge could be you know rougher. Okay. So how do we do that? Well, oops, sorry. What we do after that? is here we take a power of this guy now the power will roughen things up if we just look at this like that okay nice so uh, i remember which direction i think it's yeah it was this so lesser power uh essentially roughs uh, roughs pixels up you can you know mathematically understand why it happens i don't think i need to explain this to you guys now so let's decrease this to 0 0.45 because the circle now will be bigger, it's roughed up. And then put it here. Let's see if we have anything. Yeah, actually, yes, we do have stuff here. Now it shows on. And now if you just, just decrease power some something like 0 0.2. Actually, you know what? Let's go back to 0 0.5. This is this is the workflow that I suggest. You make everything that you you, you don't know, you know exact parameters. You have, you want to fine tune it. You make scalar parameter for all of them. So subtract sub sorry subtraction power just power, and we say the default is uh, what was zero point five right. So now let's just save this thing, and now we go here. Let's see. Yeah, right, it's, it's, it's not visible at all, so just cancel the parameters. Okay, here we go. So now you can actually experiment with this. You can see that if you get bigger power, it gets smaller circle. Or is it radius, right? So you can actually, I think it's better to, to remove, the, to, to return this one. But now if you get smaller power, you get rougher edge on the inside, right? And then, of course, you can increase this base radius, but I don't suggest doing that, because if you increase the base radius, which is the initial radius for this guy, what will happen is that it will just uh, go beyond the boundaries of the texture, and you will get this this ugly thing here going on, which is just this, this circle cut. But of course, you're, if you're an artist, or you know you have some design background or stuff, you, you may find a way to use it for your own sake okay so i think because it's uh, because it's trans uh, translucent material you cannot get uh, any glow effect maybe the, I, there should be a way to to make this thing glow but i don't quite remember it Let's see hundreds like 500 yeah right you can you just you just need more 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 um a bigger power here bigger um uh, values here so one way to make things glow is just going beyond one. In this case, I had to go really, really high beyond. Uh, but it's not really, you know, useful because it's really hard to control the color afterwards. So what I suggest doing is um, it's just a quick tip. Uh, after you get a color, I just multiply it. I use it. Uh, I use this trick, or not a trick, just as a simple tip. I use it everywhere in my glow materials. If you've seen my tutorials, and then I just multiply by a scalar parameter. I call this like glow. Something like that. Doesn't matter. Doesn't really matter what you call it. And as we remember, it was something like maybe several hundred. Okay, emissive color. Here we go. Okay. So, oops. Yeah, that was a lot. That was a lot. Uh, something like that. And now, of course, you can experiment with this guy and just make all kinds of funny shapes. So, that's how it's done here. I'll just go ahead and show you how you can just really quickly attach it. So I have this guy, this enemy. He's, he's derived, uh, oops, here we go. 
Uh, this guy is just basically a normal character derived from you know a couple of classes. Doesn't add any visual functionality. It has the same mesh, arrow component, capsule component, just like your you know your normal pawn would have. So I would just go ahead here. I would add a new. Let's say there are many ways you can use billboards. Uh, well, you cannot use billboards. You can use uh, paper to D, but I, I suggest using just static mesh. At least that's what I do. Uh, we get a static mesh. We call it like selection circle. Selection mark, right? And now, uh, for a static mesh, you just go ahead and you find something really easy, like like a. I think there was shape plane. Yeah, this is this is in starter content. You will get this if you get starter content. <clears throat> now, you go down here. You say which material. Now, one way is to use dynamic material instances, but this is like a totally different story. It's, it's really easy, but I, I don't have time to explain it now. So let me just go ahead and assign already the material instance here. Okay, nice. So here we go. Now, if this guy will be selected, you can have, you know, your own logic and blueprint so that when this guy is selected, this lights up or this becomes visible. Otherwise, you can just switch visibility of this guy. Um, let's see, in the rendering tab. Yeah, just like that. Okay, now you might want to experiment with the size of it, of course. I would already put something like at least 1.5 maybe here. And then we will need, you know, thicker edges now. So I think something like that would make more sense. Where is it? Yeah, it's here. Now, the reason why we need thicker edges is that when we go on the map, to see it on the distance, you, know, you would need something like that. So, here we go, we have our selection. Now, the blueprint's logic for selection is, you know, is a different story, but you've got, you've got the idea of the material. And this is, remember, this is all procedurally generated. So if we go into the stats, let me see, here we go. Uh, this, is, this is pretty, pretty cheap. I have not checked if it's uh, if it's cheaper, you know, than, than the texture. It should be cheaper than the user, usage of the texture. But anyway, it, it, it should eat less uh, graphical memory and stuff. And, you know, it's just a cool and, and cheap uh, material. Procedurally, procedurally generated. So, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, and i see you next time. Bye-bye.